Hey, YouTube, what's up? Um, hola, good dog, way to the bang, bosses, los, bonjour, miss me, kedu, excuse me, kedu, bawani, konnichiwa, ni hao ma, ni hao, ni hao ma, salim bonani, jambo habargani, assalamu alaikum, and shalom. This is something that we're not even wrestling with. All right, but I want people to pay attention because people keep asking me what do I think where uh, about things, and I realize they're asking me because a lot of people don't watch the whole all of my videos, and really you're not going to get a lot of people that watch the whole thing and see all of the subject matter. All right. In my videos, there's a lot of information, and a lot of people don't want to go through it and learn and or repeat the video. And while many go look over it again, again, analyze it, and then come back and add to. Some people analyze and correct, you know, and so basically, this is my stand on this and these are the facts why black america don't have a true official race as black non-hispanic is not a race all right so when we Put the thing on a, um, when we go sign in. Every time we sign into something, we are robbed of our race. I put Hebrew. That's what black people are in America. Hebrew. That is our race. We are Hebrew. Like Mongols are different from the Can Cantonese. All right, but we are Hebrews in that we are from the continent of Africa, as everybody is from the continent of Africa. And the thing that is disgusting me enough, uh, uh, the most. Is when these people come from these camps and say, we're not Africans, but you are an African. You may not be a Kenyan, you may not be a Ghanaian, but Israel, that you claim to be going back to, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the Middle East was never called the Middle East. The Middle East was part of the continent of Africa. All right. Now, let's, get, let's get, really get into it. Before the white people named it Africa and established borders and made borders of countries, because that's how they organize. Remember, black people organize as families. White people organize as borders. So they draw lines and they said, white people are like, our group is going to live here and follow this. All right, your, your group go over there and live, live there and follow this. What um, melanated people did is this group, our group of families, because of relationship, we're going to live kind of over here in these spots. All right. We're not going to own lands per se, but we're going to own what our cattle could be on. And we're going to own basically what we take care of. So we're going to pick a territory we can defend with our family. Period. So, lights out, you know, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, but still. 
All right. So um, as we look, this is how we did things different from how the Europeans did things. But all the families started out in Africa. So everybody is from Africa to include the Caucasians and everybody else. The melanated people migrated everywhere first. Melanated people migrated everywhere first. This is why you'll find that the first people to settle in Japan, China, in the Orient were melanated people. By melanated, I mean black. All right, but even in the Americas, the melanated people settled in the Americas, but then when the Mongoloids started to invade, all right, they took over the lands that the melanated people had. And then you had the intermarrying and mix and stuff. And so you had the mongoloid thing, people mixing with the melanated people to get what we now know as the Native Americans. But not all melanated people mo um, mix thoroughly with the mongoloid people, which means that when Chris Columbus got here, he took as slaves melanated people back to Europe, and that's how they got there. He took some African people, um, and then he had the Atlantic slave trade, but when the African people got here, there were African-looking people already here because the African-looking people were here before the Mongoloid people were here. All right? And so, basically, I have said this in other videos, but, you know, it wasn't as popular as some of the other ones. All right? So, this is kind of where I stand on it. But I wanted to put together some information so that you can... So that the people listening to this particular video will have an idea, will have an idea as to what I am talking about. All right. So this is what the natural indigenous native people now let me explain something black people were indigenous to this land meaning that when everybody else got here we were already here all right people are also native to this land all right because we haven't um we were born here. All right. So when they refer to Native Americans, what happened is that Chris Columbus and the European conquistadors, you know, Magellan, Cortez, Vespucci, all right. What they did is they got the light, they, they use, they have always used color to promote the color that looked more like them over the darker pigment. One, because of fear. They have always known that the darker the pigment, the stronger the human being. Understand this, the darker the pigment, the stronger the human being. M the more muscle mass, the uh, more resistant to uh, disease, the ability to use melanin to absorb light and sound and convert it into energy. All right? So, 
basically that's what we're talking about and i did a video the scientific video on how our skin does that so in, innately they fear melanated people they understand that everywhere they went they saw us first so much so that this is the reason why when christopher columbus got to the americas and he referred to us as indians he was thinking we were he was in india because we were as dark as the black people in india And what you know, until the Europeans start mixing with the people of India, they were dark, 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 dark. And if you ever see many of the India people, people from the country of India, they are very, very dark. Like the melanated people of Africa. If you don't look at the hair and you see them from afar off, yeah, the Indian, India people, and say like a Ghanaian, Nigerian, they're going to look just as dark. So that was the confusion. All right. Now, another thing. Columbus used the Apographa to get here. Where did they get, where did the English get our scripture from black people? And what they did was they lightened it up, as we say, whitened it up, and copied it for for um, consumption because they had no spiritual basis. So the spirituality comes from us. The other thing that they learned is once they created a spiritual basis. They can manipulate people spiritually. Religion, religion, not spirituality, religion is the most manipulative thing next to politics. And politics is religion by another name that we got going on. You get people sucked into religion, they will throw away logic, they will throw away commandments, they will throw away the laws of nature. You get them sucked into politics, they do the same thing. Because the only thing that matters is not family, not community, not treating people right. The only thing that matters is their guy. In religion, their guy is the pastor. That's why he could go sleep with um, a man's wife in his daughter's bed and get caught by that man bringing his son home because the school couldn't get in touch with the mother because she, as his wife, was sleeping with the pastor who also had a wife and son. And apparently this had been going on a while in the bed of the daughter and as the man gets upset and goes and gets his gun, the pastor runs outside naked. And then the woman files charges on the husband for bringing her stress. But she felt no shame of being caught in a bed in the act of being screwed by the pastor as and being witnessed by her son and her husband. And the pastor goes to the church and everybody is jumping and shouting and crying for joy because he said, I'm sorry to the church. He was sorry for putting the church in the media, but nobody in the church was sorry for that man and his family. That it was utterly destroyed by that act. That man repented to people he did not harm. And this is why when judgment comes, these preachers are going to get it the worst. He repented to people that were not harmed. But why do I tell you that? He repented to people that were not harmed is because he had them eaten out of his the palm of his hand. 
Why? Because he teaches religion. When we were like this, we didn't follow religion. When we were like this, we followed the commandments. You know, and basically the commandments is do unto others. Period. So when I was reading to prepare for this interview, I was quite surprised to see you use the word Aborigines talking about African-Americans. You know, I, I've dealt with that issue. Um, uh, I've already you know, talked publicly. And about. there was the ability to actually get across some things that may have surprised them. That they, you know, realized, okay, I, this guy's making some good We're sense on some issues. Well, I thought you said he was writing a book. Said I was writing an essay, and it requires some shut mouth. Uh, don't waste your time on those junkyard losers. This country was built on genocide and slavery. We killed all the black guys that were here, and then, and then we shipped in new black guys of our own. And then we brought in Jesus like a bar of soap. Love that. We brought in Jesus like a bar of soap because hollywood knows that the jesus thing is a myth all right hollywood knows that the jesus thing is a myth we killed the black guys that were here then brought in new black guys to replace them wait a Wait a minute. You know you make me want to shout. Why? Because somebody should be having a revelation. Why is it that they treat the Africans better than the Afro-Americans? Because the Afro-Americans they understand are still remnants of the indigenous people that were here before the Europeans got here. You understand? The Europeans felt more comfortable with the mongoloid than the negroid because the mongoloid looked more like the European. The other thing is, so long as the Negroid was following his customs, which was guided and based on the commandments, which you find in what we call scripture today, and scripture is not anything in the New Testament. That's just some writings of some people. Scripture is the commandments. So based on that, the European understood that they were going to have a hard time dealing with the Negroid. The Mongoloid was kind of based on that, right? But they were more susceptible to the diseases that Europeans had, the alcohol, and all the rest of that. Alcohol destroyed the mongoloid version of the aborigines or the natives. But black people or the natives, black people was the aborigine. And the congressmen know it. Everybody knows it. But black people. All right. What makes my video so dangerous is... I, like others on YouTube that's putting out this information, are waking people up. All right? This was us. And we were bliggity black dark. And so the reason why we have to exclaim our race, to explain our race, a color because everybody knows that well only a fraction of us are of ghana zimbabwe or the west coast of africa you may have a few that was kidnapped from the south of africa 
but you have many, many more that was raped, sodomized, tortured, had their women raped, which produced the mulattoes that we know, that were aboriginal to this land. You know, like the aborigines of Australia. So, black people were everywhere before anyone got anywhere. Now, remember the when I first started out my opening? Remember that skull that you saw? We're going to delve into that a little bit. But first, I want you to understand who we really are. And most of us here have native to this land ancestry. When they, uh, and here's the trick. So you have a dude go around on CNN and tell people that you're really from Africa. Because that's where your DNA say. Well, if you trace anybody's DNA back far enough, no matter how white or mongoloid they are, they're going to be from Africa. You understand? Remember, that's where the women let anything run up in them and produced all the races. From the Neanderthal, you know, the women says, we were the queen. We were the mother earth because everything came out of us. And that's because you let everything come in you. You know, so whatever you, they let come to them, produce things that came out of them that was different from, let's say, the aborigine of earth. So, understand natives, because we're natives here, but the Mongoloids were not the original natives. So, when they go do the DNA test with the, and, and trying to trace you to some natives here, they're being disingenuous. How are they being disingenuous? They're being disingenuous because they are tracing you to mongoloid DNA, which was not original, instead of the original Africoid DNA. But the reason why they don't want to admit that and they want to go back further, understand, they want to go back further than here when they do our DNA because they don't want it understood and they want you misunderstood as all, only being from the African continent. And what I'm saying is, yes, you are from the African continent, but yes, you are also from what we now call the American continent. And by American continent, I mean the entire American continent continent all the way up to La Alaska. So you had some Negroes that liked the cold. All right. So let's get that understanding. Archaeologists there have recently unearthed human remains. Prehistoric skulls were found buried in layers of soil 9 to 12,000 years old. They are the oldest skulls in the Americas. And this is the oldest of them all. 
the skull of a young woman nicknamed Luthia by scientists. Can she tell us who the first Americans were? Walter Nevis is a physical anthropologist at Sao Paulo University in Brazil. He has been using a standard and reliable archaeological measure, the shape of the skull, to find out what race she belonged to. He fully expected Luthia to be a mongoloid, an ancestor of the American Indians. But then he fed the measurements into the computer. When we start running the computer and uh, seeing the results, uh, it was amazing because we realized that uh, uh, the statistics, the quantitative analysis we were doing was not showing these people to be mongoloid. In fact, the analysis was showing these people was anything except mongoloid. So who was Luthia? And where did she come from? find out, the skull was taken to a hospital in Rio de Janeiro to begin the process of reconstructing her face. The first stage was to make a three-dimensional CAT scan of Luthia's skull in order to build a replica. was then given to Richard Neve of the University of Manchester in England, one of the world's leading forensic artists to recreate her features. To me, is a Negroid face that has all the features that you associate with a Negroid face. The um, proportions of the face, it doesn't say anything about it being a mongoloid. Luthia belongs to a race found historically along the rim of the Indian Ocean. In East Africa, in the islands of South Asia, and in Australia and Melanesia. Was this then the face of a first American? Her reconstruction is confirmed by measurements Walter Nevis has taken of all his skulls. The first reaction uh, was not to believe in it. But as the results, you know, repeated, repeated, repeated so many times, and the result is exactly the same thing. They are very similar to nowadays aborigines and Africans, and no similarity at all with mongoloids in Asia or with American Indians. So that you could get a clear understanding. This is what you have. Straight up African features. Straight up melanated features. Straight up. Now tell me, do you want to love me forever? Oh, sorry. Paula Abdul just came into my head real quick. But anyway, this is straight up, in all seriousness, Africoid features. And as they said in Sao Paulo, they are figuring out in Sao Paulo what everybody in the scientific community already know about in America 
But then, uh, as they don't give us reparations for the what they did to us in slavery, which was far worse than what was then done to any other human beings on the face of this planet in the course of history, all right, they still don't want to acknowledge that the majority of us were here before anybody to include the mongoloid this would be apache everybody else the majority of us were all ready here so now as you get into it, as you get into it, you now have to re-examine what Native American in America in the Americas really mean. And after you do that with the oldest skulls found in the Americas, you come up with people that are Negroid, not Mongoloid, and not European. Period. And the Negroid, as you see, migrated from what we now call Africa. Now, one of the things I want you to understand, there was no such thing as the Middle East until 1948. Before 48, the whole country, continent was called Africa, and you had a bunch of countries in Africa, not the Middle East. Another thing I would like for you to understand. That while you had a lot of countries in Africa and not the Middle East, that before Africanus named it Africa, it had two names. North of Africa, like North America, was called Kemet. Kemet went from the northern big part all the way to kind of the middle, which covered, covered Egypt, Jerusalem, um, Saudi Arabia, um, a little further down than what we know as the Middle East. All right. And then you had Ethiopia which was a landmass that covered from there all the way down to what we know as South Africa. So either you lived in Kemet, Kemet or you live in Ethiopia. But more specifically, the lands around Egypt was not called Egypt, but Mistraum. All right, these were named after families, family lands, family, cousins, extended family. And then the European came along and renamed them based on borders and the name of the person that claimed they discovered something that people already lived at. All right, so we need to quit our poisonous mindset of going to these people in camps that are feeding this stuff and not thinking critically about the information that they're feeding. What it is is they're feeding good information, but then they're interpreting the information for their followers so that the followers will be in lockstep with the leaders. And that's not a leader. That's somebody that wants to do to them what the Christian pastors have done to the church. It's the same exact thing. All right. And so now when people come on my channel and spit out crap, 
They're spitting out what somebody else told them and not what not beliefs and conclusions they came to for themselves based on the information that people put out. Now, I put out this information on my videos and then I leave my comment section open. I ain't never closed it down. All right. People talk bad about me, but they didn't say that the information was wrong unless I spelled something wrong. People have talked about the way I read. One dude just really told me, you can't read, can you? And I said, some of the times, no, I can't. I know when I can see the words and I can't. All right. And I mean, it is what it is. All right. But that's all they had to say. The person don't make videos, but they sat up there. You, you, you can't read. And the reason why I put up what I'm reading, I could just talk, but on this one, the information is in the videos that I showed you. So that's why I don't, don't have to write anything down. And plus, I'm going to put up, um, recommend some books. But the reason why I read, because some people are just, they're, they're re looking on cell phones. And so I want them to understand the scripture base that I'm coming from so that when they get home, they could go read it for themselves. Maybe terrible reading is a good thing. Not being able to see the words is a good thing because people be like, what did, he, what, what did he read? And then they'll go back and read it for themselves. Now. Here's some books I would rec uh, I want to recommend. All right. And I got three more I, I, I bought um, for one of the guys in my capoeira, capoeira, capoeira class. All right. Black Indians by William Lawrence Katz. All right. Women's Slave Narrative by Annie L. Burton and others. And you need to read this. They will tell you that more men were raped than women. Women saw an advantage and they was giving it up willingly. And they were getting land out of the deal. And then they were oppressing the black men. Wait a minute. That sounds like familiar. White men give the black woman something. And then they use the thing that the white men give them. In this case, it was land, houses, and money. And then they use that to further oppress the black man. All right. So now I'm just thinking to myself out loud. So now you got the government here. They say to the women in, say, circa 1970, 73, 74, 75, we're going to give you magazines, Miss Magazines. We're going to take this white lady and she's going to say, you know what? You don't need your black man. The government, a white man going to come in, will give you land, money, and a means to oppress your black. Dang. I sound like slavery to the black man. Land, public housing, Section 8, manpower, the family court system, which puts the police on their payroll. To go attack, shoot black men in the back that's trying to run for getting out of a child support payment. But to make sure that black men get child support payments, they'll go and track them down like the bounty hunters track down slaves that were trying to escape the plantation. So the police go and track down black men behind on child support. All right. Because the crime they committed was having sex with a black female and having sex during slavery without the permission of the white man was sometimes a crime then the black female that got the house from the white man the slave master and the land then use the said house land and um, the slave master's 
henchmen and system to further oppress the black man. Like today they use the public housing section A child support alimony and the police 911 to further oppress the black man yeah i would recommend this book women slave narratives yeah i would uh, yep yeah. i would recommend it yep and the seminal freedman a history But yeah, that would be a doozy. That'd be a doozy. All right. Now, the other one. They came before Columbus. The American presence in ancient America. By Ivan Van Certima or Certima. That's S-E-R-T-I-M-A. Ivan, I-V-A-N, Van, V-A-N, Sertima, S-E-R-T-I-M-A. Then the next one is the destruction of black civilization. Great issues of a race from 4500 B.C. to 2000 A.D. By Chancellor Williams. And then one last one, a hundred amazing facts about the Negro with complete proof by J.A. Rogers. Wow, that women's slave narrative just made me start thinking to my, were you thinking to yourself while I was thinking to myself? Um, let me know in the comment section. Could you hear me thinking out loud? If you did hear me thinking out loud, were you thinking the same thing? Let me know in the comment section. And don't forget, please like, share, and subscribe. With that said, I'm out.